Lord, I'm asking you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would consider every prayer that your people write down, every problem that they write down, Father God, every concern, Lord, because you asked us, you told us, you written to us, God, that we also cast our cares on you because you care for us. Come on, ye that labor and are heavy laden. So we're coming to you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We're coming to you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and we're crying out, and we asking you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to expound your word, expound your truth, and die was on today, God, and then we're going to welcome you into this situation. We're going to welcome you into our hearts. We're going to welcome you into our minds. We're going to welcome you into this building on today, God. We're going to welcome you in the sanctuary, Father God. We're going to welcome you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Because we do not want you to just stand on the outside, God. We want you to be on the inside. Because we know that if you are on the inside, Father God, we know that some things is going to be shifted. Some things is going to change. We know this, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God. So we're inviting you in on today, Lord. We're asking you to enter in on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Touch each and every individual in this sanctuary. Touch each and every individual that's on the way. Touch each and every individual that need to be here and won't come. Touch each and every individual, Father God, that even finds an excuse, Father God, not to enter into your presence. Lord, I'm asking you to touch your people on today, Father God. Let your will, your way, and your purpose be done, God. I'm asking you to open up any and every revelation, Father God, on today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let your people, Father God, will be anchored and stand firm. I'm asking you to do it, Lord, because I know that you can. I'm asking you to even touch your children on today, God. I'm asking you to grab, stay attention, Lord, that they may be able to know, and they may be able to see, and they may be able to witness that all power lies in your hand, God. I'm asking you to do it on today, God. I'm asking you to reign in the families, God. I'm asking you to reign in the lives, God. I'm asking you to reign in the minds on today, God. I'm asking you to rain down on today, God, like you've never done before. Manifest yourself on today, God. He cut me the local seat with the reconciliation, God. Manifest yourself on today, God, with the love that you're the local seat that abounds, Lord. I'm asking you to manifest yourself like you don't go shut that I can see. Oh God. So be your question in the Lacasia. Oh God, I'm asking you to do it on today, God, because we know that you can. So we're going to praise and worship you in advance. We're going to thank you in advance for what you are about to do. We're thanking you right now, Father God. I'm asking you to heal, God. Every infirmity in the bodies of your people on today, God. Let her be your koshana de la kasiya. Hey, God. Hey, God. Oh, God. Hey, God. Hey, God. Hey, God. Hey, God. Hey, Hey, God. Hey, God. Hey, God. I want y'all to write down any and every problem, any and every concern. If you got aches and pains inside of your body, if there's any sickness and disease or any viruses that's going on in your body, and you think and believe that you cannot be healed, I want you to write that thing down on today. And as you write that thing down, I want you to write it in faith and believing that God is able to do the deal. I do not want you to just write it down because you're following instructions. I do not want you to just write it down because you are being obedient. But I want you to write it down with confidence that it is so. It is so. It is so. If it's reconciliation in the family, as you write it down, it is so. If it is the Okoshana de la Casia, whatever it is, it is so. By God's body, Okoshia, by His might, by His power, and by His. It is so. Oh God. 
Oh God. Oh mama nereloko shat nerelakasia. Oh God, he can't need a local shot in the Lacassia. It's been some things that I need a Cosia have put forward before God. He's saying right now, ha ha, you're a local Cosia. It is so. Oh God, it is so. Oh, Yamaha shot in the Cosia. I'm your Cosat in the Lacassia. It is so. Oh, Yamaha shot in the Cosia. Oh God. Oh, mama, nere lo kosi. He can nere lo kosha nere la kasiya. Oh, mama, nere lo kosha nere la kasiya. Oh, God, say he can nere lo kosi. It is so. I thank you, Lord, your kosi for your declaration. I thank you, Lord, for your declaration. I thank you, Lord, for doing it. Thank you, Jesus, your kosha nere mama nere lo kosi. It is so. Hey, God, thank you, little Koshan, little Lakasi. Oh, God, thank you, little Koshan, little Lakasi. Thank you, Jesus, 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 little Koshan, little Lakasi. It is so. He called my man. He did not go shunned in the lacassia. He did not go shunned in the lacassia. We got to know how to activate our faith. He come to the lacassia. Hiya, my man. He did not go see what the Lord was showing me. What the Lord was showing me. Hiya, the lacassia. As he gave me the sermon, what he was showing me is how us as his people. We we really don't understand. We really don't understand what he is doing in our lives right now in this season, because this is the this is the acceptable. We gotta accept Jesus. If we accept Jesus in totality, let me tell you something. There is nothing that you will not be able to accomplish. I preached maybe about a month ago that God is a God that wants you to be a what? Success. And it's that word specifically. Success. He do not want us to think or believe that we cannot obtain a thing or we cannot do a thing or a thing is not happening or it cannot happen. Whatever is happening, it needs to happen in our lives. In order for us to get to where God want us to be. Not where we want to go. Not by looking at nobody else. Not by thinking this. Not by believing this. Not by obtaining this. Or accomplishing it. No, none of that. I'm going to prove it to you guys. The name of the sermon today is Are You Positioned to Be Conditioned? Position, an act of placing or arranging in order. It's the point or area occupied by a physical object. Position is a relative place, situation, or standing. Position is to arrange something in a certain spot. Position is the action for which a person or thing is specially fitted or used for which is a thing existing. I'm going to read that again. Position is the action for which a person or thing is specially fitted or used or for which a thing existed. Whatever position that you are in now, whether it's good or bad, mentally or physically, whatever area it is in, you were specially fitted so that you could be used for which a thing can be existing or come to life in your life. It's the area of space occupied or, or intended for something. The position that you are in now was intentional. Don't y'all know we serve an intentional God? 
The place where someone is assigned to stand or remain. I'm going to say that again. The place where someone is assigned to stand or remain. The placement of someone or something in relation to others in a vertical arrangement. I gave y'all the definition in school. See, we got to stay in alignment. We got to stay in position because we think and believe because I'm not doing this the way I think I should because of what other people think I should, that I'm not in my right position. And so because we're thinking in that aspect, we get out of position and out of alignment. The name of the sermon today, are you positioned to be conditioned? We as people have a tendency of thinking and believing that we have to present ourselves in a way to certain people because of their stature or because of what they're doing or because of what we think they are doing. We are the position, y'all. Huh? We as people, the, the only, let me read condition, because I was going to start talking about it. Condition. Please listen. Something essential to the appearance or occurrence of something else. A restricting or modifying factor. A state of being. A state of physical fitness or readiness for use. To condition is a state of physical fitness or readiness to use. It's to put into a proper state for work or use. After you wash your hair, you condition it, don't you? Because you want it to be in the right texture so that it can be properly managed. Right, yeah. With and after you condition your hair, you got it in a position that you can give it a hot oil treatment so that it can what prosper or it can grow or it'll be more manageable. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. See, it got to be in the right state in order to be conditioned though. You can't condition your hair and you ain't washed it first. Because it's going to have all kind of uh, impurities. It's going to have all kind of dirt and grime and grit and it's going to itch. It's going to you're going to have all that stuff. but So you got to get, get it in the right position or the right state in order to condition it, right? And then after you condition it, you're adding on up. Is y'all getting it? Am I losing anybody? See, we got to be in position to, to be conditioned. See, we think that we have to be in a certain, I'm going to say it again, spiritual state. In order to be conditioned. And it's not true. Why you say that? Because the Bible says so. Do it really say that? Jesus said, I did not come for the ones that already got it together. I came for the sinner that they may come into what? Repentance. So he trying to get them to get in the right place. I'm just saying. What did he say Friday? It's something inside of you that you may not be able to see. But God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, saw the best in you. So he got to work out the worst so that the best can produce what he has already declared. I'm just saying, we got to get in position to be conditioned. And it ain't what we think other people think of us. That's the last thing. Because let me tell you something. Ain't nobody 
in this entire world going to think what you thought they shouldn't have thought? Do I need to say that another way? Because no matter how much you do, if something, a conversation, a word or something is spoken to you that you believe is negative or critical concerning what you do and you thought it was a good thing or the right thing or the best thing, then your thought is going to fall to you to get out of position and how's that? In this right here because this is what you're going to think. No matter what I do, I can't get nothing right. You ain't in position no more. Because you worrying about what somebody else is thinking or what somebody else is saying. It done took you, it done discombobulated you so bad up here until you feel like I shouldn't even do nothing because what I am doing, it ain't getting acknowledged, it ain't enough, or it ain't. That. I'm just saying, y'all. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm gonna give y'all the scriptures. We're gonna go to the book of John, I'm proving to you. Condition to adapt modify or mold so as to conform to an environing culture. To condition is something necessary, indispensable, or unavoidable. You cannot avoid it. I, I, I'm, I'm going to prove it. I can't wait to start reading this book. To change something so as to make it suitable for a new use or situation. I just explained all that in there. I just gave y'all an example of everything that I just said. Position. To be conditioned. Are any of us in the right position? Are any of us trying to stay aligned? You see what I'm saying? Because let me tell you something. Stop beating yourself up. Because you think and you believe that I did that, Lord. And I said, he said, I will forgive you your sins and throw them in a sea of forgiveness. So we got to forgive ourselves. Because we keep bringing it up again. Now there we go again. Right up in here. Oh Lord, I'm so sorry. Oh Lord. Well, if you're sorry, then don't do it no more and change. Not just for that moment. Not just for that, that second. But continuously. Continuously. Let's go to the book of John chapter 5, please. I'm going to prove it. Are you positioned to be conditioned? St. John chapter 5, we're going to start from the top. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. I told y'all what the number five represents. If, if, if you read this book right here, Numbers are important and they symbolize something. The number five in the Bible is spoken of over 300 times. Did y'all know that? See, the number five represents grace, mercy, kindness, and God's will. That's what the number five represents. Listen to this. In these, I'm going to start from the top. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda's having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. What is impotent? It's lack in power, strength, or vigor. It's incapable of self-restraint. It's not able to produce fruit or offspring. It's unable to act or achieve one's purpose. So when you say impotent, it just don't mean that you can't handle kids. It, it don't mean that you're just infertile. But that's one of the, the definitions to impotent. Impotent is a lack of power, strength, or vigor. Because sometimes we go through things so much and be in that place for so long 
world until we lose our strength. We lose our vigor. And we ain't got no power to change it or overturn it until we get weary. It causes us to get faint. And, and let me say this. We get sick and tired of being sick and tired. See, impotent goes a little bit de deeper than what we think it is. To be impotent is incapable of self-restraint. So you ain't got no self-control. Or you cannot restrain yourself from doing that thing that you know is wrong. You cannot restrain yourself from thinking that thing that you know you shouldn't think. You cannot restrain yourself from absolutely not. See, impotency goes a little bit deeper. It's, it also says that you are unable to act or achieve one's purpose. When you're impotent, you get to a place of confusion or you just stop and you wonder, well, what is my purpose? Why? Because you are impotent. You are impotent because you are lost. You are impotent because you have not embraced the truth. That acceptable thing. And I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to read it. The Bible says that these lay a great Multitude. A multitude mean a lot of people that was impotent. He said impotent folk, not impotent person. He talking about the folk and the people. <laughs> of the blind, the heart. What is heart? Heart, let, let's go back because I don't want to skip over none. Of the blind. Blind means that you cannot see. It means that you have a lack of understanding. To be blind is to be clueless. To be blind is is darkness. You, I, I, I don't want to skip nothing. He said heart. To display weakness or imperfection. He talking about the people that know that they ain't got it right and can't get it right and they want to they want to act right. To be in a state of uncertainty or doubt between alternate courses or choices. He's talking about the double-minded ones. He's talking about the ones that is, is not sure. The, the ones that's confused. That's carrying the doubt and uncertainties. He's talking about the ones that say scared. Scared. Fearful. These are the ones that's hard to walk or proceed with a limp. See, heart has a, a whole bunch of varieties of, of definitions. So it's not one set thing. See, this is the problem with the scripture. We want to apply it to one set thing when Jesus wants us to understand that it's versatile. It's versatile. Because if we think that it's one set thing, then we may get to thinking the wrong way. And what is that? Oh, that don't apply to me. Yes, it does. He's talking about the ones that got one leg longer than the other. That's, that's got a limb. He's talking about that one that can walk normal, but yet they feet. See, he talk, we're talking about heart. See, I'm giving y'all all these different definitions so that you can understand that it's not just one set thing. To cause the discontinuance of or to stop. That means you start and stop. You go and you dip, dip, dip. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you will, sometimes. He's talking about the world coasters. Yeah, I'm giving y'all this man, to bring something to a standstill. What about that? What about that? He's talking about to bring to an immediate end. Why? Because you are impotent. So you hard or you stop. And then the next word says withered. What is withered? To lose vitality, liveliness, force, or freshness. See, sometimes, you. how many times have you heard, oh, you that, that's a newborn baby. You better show that baby some kind of love or it ain't going to thrive. It start with it. It ain't going to gain no weight. It ain't going to eat. It ain't going to It's just going to lay there. I, 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 my, my son got a set of twins. He got a set of twins by this young lady that lives in Texas now. She went back home. 
So when both the twins was born, the very first one that was born came out was Deontay, and the second one was Dante. And so, because she was so in love with my son, she only tended to Deontay. And then I give Dante a lot of love. And so when we took him to the doctor, I kept telling her, I say, you got to start holding the Dante, Dante too. You got to start doing it. You and she said, Well, I do. He he's, he he don't need the attention. Yes, he does. And so when we took him to the doctor, the doctor said the same thing. He's not going to thrive. So he was just withering away. Literally. And so I had to take my babies. I get mad. But I'm just saying. See, you will wither away naturally if ain't nobody feeding you something. It could be food, it could be love, it could be kindness, it could be you will wither away spiritually if you're not I'm just I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to say. See, whether to make speechless or incapable of action is to lose bodily strength of vigor. Again, I'm going to start from the top. I can get y'all these definitions so you know so I can keep it moving, right y'all? Okay. The name of the sermon today is Are You Positioned to Be Conditioned? And we are in St. John chapter 5. We're starting from verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. So if he got five porches, that means you could enter into this pool five different ways, right? And it says this, look. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, hard, wither, waiting for the movement of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease they had. So diseases is not just sickness in your body, baby. It could be in your mind. You could have a skin disease. You, it don't matter what it is. Okay, listen to this. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. For 38 years he laid at this pool. It never said nobody took him to that pool and he left and came back waiting for trouble and other water. It never said that. The Bible says that he laid there and been laying there for 38 years. For 38 years, he laid there. Now listen to this. We know that he did not leave and come back. I'm, let me finish reading. I'm, because this thing got deep to me. Listen. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. Are y'all getting it? He said unto him. Will thou be made whole? Okay. Now here come Jesus. Dude, wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me finish because this thing like this. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the, when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Why, why is I'm a silent? Why y'all think I'm silent? I'm going to say it again. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? So, first of 
ball, he asking him a question. Why did he ask him that question? Ponder on that because I'm going to get back to it. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. You better stop waiting on folk to pray for you. You, you better stop waiting on folk to do because look. And then the next thing that he said was this right here. This blew me out the water. He said, he said, but while I am coming, another step is down before me. So, you know why somebody stepping down before you? You know why somebody going ahead of you? Because you still in that state of waiting. Now he didn't already ask you, will thou be made whole? He did not say, can you be made whole? He didn't. He did not say, do you want to be made whole? He said, will. You, see, sometimes you got to allow your will. You got to allow your will to will some things. See, I, I hope I ain't losing nobody. So, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. Jesus said unto him, Now he already got compassion on him. Because the Bible says that when he saw him laying there and knew he'd been there for 38 years, he asked him, Will thou be made home? Mm. <laughs> Notice what the impotent man said. He never answered Jesus' question, but he gave him an excuse. <laughs> he gave him an excuse. And even in him giving him that excuse, Jesus said, okay, because he don't get it. Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Now mind you, he didn't get in that water, did he? Okay, listen. The Jews therefore said unto him, that was cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. That was one of the laws there, y'all. He answered them, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed was not who it was. He know who Jesus was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in his place. In other words, he left where he was. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. See, first and foremost, the more of this story right here is that An impotent man that had been sick for 38 years followed instructions. Did y'all hear what I said? I, let, me, let me start over. An important man that did not even know who Jesus was. He did not know who he was. Because they asked him. Did they not? I read it. An important man that laid there for 38 years. Could not and did not even answer the question. But he gave an excuse. And even in that excuse and that justification. Jesus still showed mercy. 
an important man that looked, pay attention, and watched everybody else being healed. Ha! How many times you been looking and watching everybody else? He did the one thing. What did he do? He followed instructions. So what did he do? He willingly, he willed a thing. How did he will that thing? By simply doing what he was told. Jesus said, will thou do? And then, after Jesus disappeared, and then now, he went to the temple and saw the man in the temple. Not only did that man follow instructions, but he went where he knew. He, he went to church then. And when he went, Jesus said, when he saw him, now you done made whole now and did everything that you wanted. You, that's the very thing that you, I gave you the very thing that you desire. Come on, somebody. Yeah. How many times he gave you the very thing that you desire? And this is what he said to him. He said, I done made you whole now. Sin no more. Oh, if you sin again, if you do it again, it's going to be worse. So how many times that you followed the instruction that one time and then you went back and did it. Now you're in a worse state of mind. You're in a, your, your heart worse. Your mind worse. I did, see, what we need to understand is that following instructions from Jesus can lead to wholeness. Let me prove it to you. I said it on Friday. I'm going to say it today. Let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. See, because it's available for all of us. It's available for all of us. Are you positioned to be conditioned? Was he positioned? He was in the right position to be conditioned. How was he in the right position to be conditioned? Because he was in the right place at the right time, baby. Did you hear what I say? He was in the right place at the right time. And while he had laid there for 38 years looking at everybody else, getting made whole, getting healed, getting everything that they desired from the Lord, getting everything that they prayed for, the Bible says that Jesus came along and asked him one question, will thou be made whole? He didn't say, King, I'll make you whole. King. You know what? That man ain't even know who he was. The, but I just read it. He did not even know who he was. He said, now you know you're supposed to be carrying your bed. It's a Sabbath day. You're supposed to be doing nothing on the Sabbath day. He said, that man that just healed me told me to pick up my bed and be up. I ain't walked in 38 years. You gotta be kidding. I'm going I'm not gonna just walk. I'm gonna carry this bed. I'm gonna put it on my back. I'm gonna hold it on my head. And I'm gonna go. I'm going to church. See you later. I'm going. The Bible say he went to Jesus found him where? In the church, baby. You I'm, I'm just saying, y'all. I'm just <laughs> You can, you trying to sit up here and tell me what not to do? And somebody said, take up your bed and walk. I've been laying down here for 38 years. Baby, you could be in a state of mind, a situation. You could be in sickness for 20, 30, 10, 5. I wouldn't give a rest to tell how long it is. I'm going to ask you a question today. Will thou be made whole? Because God can make you whole, baby. Jesus can make you whole. It does not matter what that situation is. You could have been in that mental state of mind because of you've been afflicted in your childhood. You've been molested. You've been torn down. You've been rejected. Any and everything has come up against you. You can't take a step forward because they got their foot on your neck. Baby, I'm going to ask you today, will thou be made whole? Will you get in position to get conditioned? It does not mean that you got to be spiritual. It does not mean that you got to know who Jesus is. Because that man did not know who Jesus was. All he did was one thing, and that's follow instructions. Ah! That's it. 
broken? Will you be made whole? He do not want us to be in a state of mind of bitterness and hate. Will you be made whole? He do not want us to be in a state of affliction and infirmity in our bodies, thinking and believing that we can't be healed. Oh, I can't have no kids. Oh, ain't nobody gonna love me. Oh, oh this. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Will you be made whole? Will you be yes, made home? Are you positioned to be conditioned? Because that man was positioned. He was positioned that he thought that he was going to be conditioned because an angel came and troubled the water. But the Bible says he never got in that water for 38 years. He just laid there still. And then a stranger came by. You better be careful who you entertain. A stranger came by. And when that stranger came by, he looked down at him. The Bible says he knew how long that man been laying down there. And he asked him one question, will you be made whole? That man said, you know what? I want nobody help me in the water. And then when I, 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 I get there, so you know he's struggling. If he laid there for 30, that man was struggling. That man was down there, and he was trying to, trying to, oh, he was trying, he said, and when I get ready to step in there, he said, somebody come and step in before me. They, so if they step in before him, what they do? They step right on over that man. They step right on over him. Now they had another affliction going on in their body. But this man was struggling, trying to, he said, I ain't got nobody to put me in there. And, uh, and, 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 and Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk. He never laid his hands on him. He never, he never, the Bible says that man picked up his bed and walked. And when he got to walking and he was scared, I could just imagine him. Ooh. Y'all don't get it. I'm, a, I'm walking and then the Pharisees and the Sanctions said, what you doing? You don't supposed to be carrying your bed. He said, oh, that man that made me whole told me to pick up my bed. I'm picking up. So, he said, you, well, who was that man? And he got to looking around. I don't even know who he was. All I know is he told me to do it and I did it. Okay. Now, so he didn't even know Jesus. So therefore, you ain't got to be spiritual to be made whole. Ain't God. All you got to do is follow instructions. If God tells you to do something, baby, all you got to do is do it. You could be a non-believer. I remember that boy came in here. And when he came in here, he was standing right here. And the Lord had me to walk up to him and tell him something. And then he said, how you know that? I say, I don't. I'm just telling you what the Lord said. I say, now the Lord is telling you to do this. I say, do it. And you shall live and you shall not die. I say, but if you don't, somebody going to be going to your funeral. Did you hear what I say? Did you hear what I say? And then a couple of Sundays later, he came in here again. I say, oh, he said, I did it. I say, praise God. All you got to do. Follow instructions. I dare you. I dare you to follow instructions. Accept what God is saying to you. Let me prove it to you. Let's go to Luke right quick. Luke. Is it Luke? Yeah. Luke chapter 4. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Talking about Jesus. It's Jesus, y'all. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me. And what is the poor? He talking about the poor in spirit. He ain't just talking about the poor that ain't got no money. He talking about the one that think that they can't and they can. He talking about the one that have tried and they have not succeeded. He talking about the poor, baby. He talking about the poor that is within you. Because when you get into that place of being poor in your mind, in your heart, baby, you get depressed. You get sad. You get in a dark place. You in the feast position in your room crying in the wee hours of the night. And people think you're in there snoring when you're in there I'm just saying. Huh. He said he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. 
to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year. So in other words, you got to accept the Lord. Because guess what? You got to accept the Lord. Because guess what? Let me tell you something. You can be poor in spirit, baby, and have no energy and no vigor for to do absolutely anything. Not even to eat, sleep, or even try to take care of your kids or even go to work. And you know you need the money for to pay your bills. You could be so down and so low, baby, until you walking around depressed. Until when people look at you, they know something wrong. And you ain't even told them nothing was wrong. We talking about how he can heal the broken heart. You ain't got to step in that pool. Or you ain't got to wait for nobody else to pray for you. All you got to do is just follow instructions. All you got to do is what the Lord say do. And it's one thing that Jesus even told his disciples because they always walking around here. Well, Lord, why did you could why we could not cast out that demon? Why we could not? He said, bring them here, you faithless generation. You can will something into your own life. Did y'all hear what I say today? Jesus never asked that man one time, can you be made whole? Do you want me to make you whole? He said, will thou be made whole? And that man gave him all kind of excuses. No, nope, you ain't even got to give God no excuses. You ain't got to give him no excuses. Because like the Bible says, listen to me. He already know what you need and what you want. So when he comes to you, he is going to be direct. Did y'all know we serve a direct God? Yeah. We serve a God of specifics. He gonna come to you direct. He ain't gonna ask you well, what you want me to pray for for to tell God today. He the, uh uh. He ain't gonna do that. I see so many people. Well, what you want me to pray for you? No, I, I did, whatever the Lord put on your heart. Whatever the Lord tell you to pray for me. Because he already knows. Jesus knows. The Bible says that man laid there for 38 years. And when Jesus walked up, he said he knew he had been there for so long. And he asked him one question. Will thou be man? Will you allow God to heal your broken heart? From what that man or that woman did to you that you won't be in that place. Will you be made whole in that? That you may be able to even hear their name? Come on. Come on, somebody. Because sometimes you hear a name and it just... It, it shakes you all over. You don't get your panties in, but no, it shakes some things. You see what I'm saying? Will you allow God to heal every sickness and disease that's inside of you and to believe it? It don't matter what the doctor's saying. I'm a witness. It don't matter what the doctor, it don't matter what the, you could go to the doctor and something going on in your body and they can't even figure it out and you see it. And the Lord, don't you know that it's for the glory of the Lord? He is trying to teach you to trust in him while you ripping and running to the doctor thinking and believing that they could tell you something. But if you do not believe in Jesus, you better go to the doctor. I'm just saying. <laughs> if you don't believe in him, you better go to the doctor. Did you, did you better see something, whether it's mentally or spiritually, or whether it's for your health, your body, a gynecologist, or doodle, or, or dermatologist. I, I wouldn't give a rest to what it is. We already know he could heal skin disorder because he do leprosy. He healed leprosy. That was a skin disorder, y'all. That was psoriasis. I just gave it a new name. They just don't know all this stuff. Are you positioned to be conditioned? Yes. The Lord wants to condition us. And in conditioning us, he wants us to be made whole in any and every area of our life. So stop telling yourself that this can't, this won't, this will. This, nah, nah. If you're willing something, you're willing all, negative, all negativity. Stop it. Will something positive. Yes. 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 Stop making excuses and follow instructions. How? Did that happen? He did not know who Jesus was. Jesus told him to do something and he did it. Why? Because he believed. You believe. Is that not willing, son? He was willing to do what he was told to receive what he had desired for 38 years. Okay, let me say that again because it hit me. 
It's a lot of us in here that want some stuff, desire some stuff, and been waiting on some stuff that we've been praying for for years ago. Are you willing to follow instructions and to believe that it's going to take place all because he said so? So if he said I'm walking in millionaire status, <laughs> baby, I'm walking in millionaire status. I'm willing to walk in that status and I believe that he said it. Now, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I know it's already happening. Because I'm walking in it. Why? Because I'm following instructions. Are y'all getting it? Are y'all getting it? God gave us dominion over. I'm trying to help y'all to, to, to take the keys that he gave us and utilize them. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Because let me explain something to you. We as people say this. I as a person and a human being has access to all the promises that Jesus spoke. I believe it, therefore I shall receive it. In Jesus' name. Okay, do y'all believe that? If you believe it, you will be made whole. How? Then I'm not going to be troubled about that bill. Because he said the earth is his and the fullness thereof, the seven to go below him. He says he's going to give me any and everything that I need. If he allowed them lights to get cut off, maybe he need me to be in a dark place to know that he is shining in. I'm just saying I'm just saying, I'm not going to let it trouble me because I cannot be troubled with the troubles that trouble me because Jesus told me, let not my heart be troubled. And if I believe in God, I believe also in him. I got to believe in him because God told me about him. And when he died and was resurrected, then guess what? I was willing to accept his blood as a ransom for me. So what am I troubled about? It don't matter what the doctor say. It don't matter how they say it. It don't matter how often they say it. Or even if they say it's life threatening. Why? Because I believe God. Why? Because he holds life and death in his hand. Man cannot take my life and neither can they give it to me. Jesus. God holds life and death in their hand. It don't matter what them doctors say. Why? Because he said, by his stripes I'm healed. So everything that he was bruised, everything that happened, everything that he went through, by his stripes I am healed. So it don't matter what the doctors and all the people and folks say. Y'all better think about the lady with the issue of blood. Her belief activated, just like the belief of that man that laid it, but they never said his name. We still don't know his name today. They said a man laid at the pool. You see what I'm saying? We be in expectation for God to work out a thing the normal way when he is sick. Maybe it'll be an unusual way. See, we may be going to, you know what? I'm going to go and, I'm gonna, and I know this is going to happen. I know. God say he's an unusual God. His ways and his thoughts is not like ours. We are in expectation for one way when he is doing it another way. We think God is going to tell us any and everything that one time he ain't. He may give you a plan and tell you to do this and then you stuck and don't even know how or what to do next. And the question is, follow them instructions first. Because if you don't follow them instructions first, then how you going to know that he is, I am. And he any and everything that we need him to be. Are we positioned to be conditioned? Again, you do not have to be in that spiritual place that you think that you should be. But you have to be available to receive it. You have to accept him, his word, and be willing to follow. Come on, yellow sheets of paper and red pens. It's praying time, y'all. We all know what he's doing.
may not be able to see him working. But he's working out something. Write that stuff down. Cause every day there's something in the way. There's always something or somebody or, or even a thought that's inside of our minds, even inside of our hearts to try to prevent us or keep us from being in that place.
ourselves to stay in that same place, in that same state. Pay attention to what happened, y'all. This man laid at that pool for 38 years. And all the time, pay attention, because God just blew me with this one. As he laid there for 38 years, one thing that he kept hope inside of him, and guess what it was? He was in expectation. Even though it took him 38 years to be healed, he was saying, you know what? This time I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm telling you, the Bible said he was in pro That man was trying to crawl. He said, when I got to the end of it, Somebody step in before me. And, and, and before he said that, he said, ain't nobody helping. See, sometimes, let me stop this. Sometimes you don't have no help. Sometimes people are going to see that you need help and they're going to help you and they're going to step right on over you. We're talking about the man at the pool of Bethesda. Sometimes you ain't going to have no help. But we have to accept Jesus and know him. Because when he walked up to the Bible says. When Jesus walked up to that pool. He saw a man that had been laying there for 38 years. And he already knew how long he'd been laying there. He asked him one thing. Will thou be made home? That man gave him an excuse. He said, I ain't got nobody to help me put, put, put me in there. And then by the time I get there, somebody done stepped in before me. So they done stepped over him. You ain't going to have nobody to help you sometimes. To pray. You ain't gonna, then the Bible goes on and say, okay. Jesus ain't, ain't even respond to what he said. He just looked at him and said, pick up your bed and walk. He waited 38 years. Why? Because he was already in expectation. He did not even know who Jesus was, y'all. Because when they asked him, who, who, who told you to carry your bed? You know you're supposed to do that. He said, that man that healed me and got to looking around. He didn't even know who he was in contact with. See, sometimes you ain't going to know who God allows to come in contact with you that can speak a thing into your life. You don't know. So be careful how you entertain people. Be careful what you thinking about people. Because God could allow somebody to speak some things in your life, baby, and it happened, say suddenly. Instantaneously. The Bible says, Jesus looked at that man after he gave him that excuse and said, pick up your bed and walk. That man did not know who Jesus was. So he couldn't believe in him, right? But because he was in expectation, he received that thing that he desired for 38 years. What are y'all expecting in your lives? What are you ex in expectation for? The Lord already spoke some things in your life. We don't want to be hot and maimed and, and, and wither away waiting on it. But we want to be in expectation for it. Knowing that he spoke it, it is so. He had me pray this morning. What did he say? It is so. Be in expectation for what God has already done spoke over your life. Let's be like the man at the, at the pool of Bethesda and just follow his instructions. Because he's a God of specifics. And then what did he tell the man? The Bible says that after the man jumped up and he ran, the Bible said that man ran to the church. And when he ran to the church, Jesus came into the church. 
the temple. That's, that was the church. They called it the temple then. The Bible says he came into the temple and saw him. And then this is what he told him. He said, you've been made whole, huh? You got everything that you desire. You waited for a long time. And then you got it. You don't even know who I am. But let me introduce myself. My name is Jesus. I'm the one that made it happen for you. And in doing so, it's something required of you. He says, you may hold, go and sin no more. Or a worse thing is going to come upon you. That's what the Bible says. I ain't making this up. I just read it. So we have to accept the Lord as our Savior. And again, what did he say? He ain't coming for nobody that think they got it together. He want all of us, and we all, all of us, me, you, him, her, they will, are sinners. Ain't nobody got it together. If we did, we wouldn't be here. He's got to perfect that thing inside of you that concerns you. Because that thing that you want to do right, you don't do. But that thing that you don't want to do, that's what you do the most. And that's all of us. I'm just, I'm going to let them talk about event. I don't want nobody to think I'm talking about. I'm talking about event. Because let me explain something to you. Your expectation will activate your belief. How? That man was in, in expectation to get healed. And even though he did not get healed by the normal way that he thought he was going to by entering into that pool. Because he was in expectation. He believed what that individual said to them and followed instructions and it was so. Are y'all following me? Come on, write down all this stuff that you think is hindering you. That you think is stopping you. That you think is a stronghold. That you think is hard. Write down all the stuff that you've been waiting on and you've been hoping on and you've been praying for. When you bring it up to this altar today, I ain't talking about everything that you wrote down all that other time. You can write it down again today. When you bring it up into this altar today and you put it on that altar, be in expectation to receive it. And if God spoke it over your life, believe it. And there it is. That's it and that's all. It ain't nothing hard. Stay in position so that he can condition you. Staying in position is trying with any and everything in you to walk upright and holy. That's what the Bible says. Sin no more or a worse thing is going to come upon you. That's what the Bible says. Lord, Thank you, Jesus. Let's bring them things to the altar. Put it on the altar. And once you put it on the altar, I want you to start praying for yourself. This is a season to accept any and everything that God has for you individually and expectations. And knowing that he has already spoken, you're going to acquire it. Don't sit up and wait for him to do it in the normal way or the way that you expect him to do it. But expect him to do it in any way that he do it. That's why I'm playing this song. Whatever you do, it, Lord, don't do it without me. You may not do it the way that I think that you're going to do it or the usual way. But I want you to do it the way that you want to do it. That I may know without a shadow of a doubt that it was you, God. Whatever you're doing, Lord, don't do it without me. In this season right here, I accept you. I accept you today, God. I accept what you're going to do.
gonna do, God. Lord, as your people write these things down, Father God, in the name of Jesus, you know each and every last one of them individually, Lord. You know any and everything that they've been waiting on. You know any and everything, Father God, that they have been asking you for. And you even know how long they've been waiting for. Right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you right now, Father God, to not just trouble the water, but speak that word. Speak that word, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and bring that thing into fruition, God. I'm asking you to settle the lines of your people, God. I'm asking you I'm asking you to do it, Lord, because I know that you can, I know that you will, and I know that you delight in doing so, God. I'm asking you to touch any and every important person right now, God. I'm asking you to touch any and every important person right now, God. I'm asking you to touch any and every person that is with God, and that they have lost all their vision in your Lord. I'm asking you to touch that situation, God. Any and everything, Father God, that they be your go shut down. I just keep hearing entrepreneurship. I'm asking you to touch it right now, God. It ain't everything you don't go shut down like that. Oh, God, because I know that you're able, Lord. I know that you're able, God. Whatever you're doing, God, don't do it without your people. It's a lot of your people, Father God, in the name of Jesus. They heard about you, but they just don't know about you. And even if you're not knowing, Father God, that ain't your go see. I'm asking you to help us to be in that place of being positioned. Lord, that we may be able to receive any and everything that you promised. That we may be able to walk into the victory in our lives, Lord. I'm asking you to do it right now, Lord, because I know that you are able and I know that you are capable. There is nothing that is impossible with you, Lord. There is nothing that you cannot do, God. Oh, Lord, I'm asking you to shut me and open the sea. That thing that you spoke over the lives of your people, I'm asking you to allow it to come in your Gosia. To come into fruition today, God. Work it all out. It's going to be some people that the Lord allows to cross your path. Huh? That is going to allow the next phase of your life to take place. I'm going to say that one more time. It's some things that is going to happen in your life that God is going to allow a person to cross your path that the next phase is about to take place in your life. Be careful how you entertain people. Don't be prideful and haughty. Yes, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Don't be unpleasant and sarcastic. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Don't act like you know it all. Yes, Lord. When God has allowed this person to cross your yes, path Lord. to help to elevate you to the next phase yes. in your life. I get a little cosia. The chapter. That you are in your life right now. Listen to me y'all. Is being closed. You are entering into the next chapter. Of your life. And entering into the next chapter. Of your life. That means. That you cannot dwell. Look. you because this is a new chapter this new chapter this new chapter is going to allow you to be able to experience some things that you never experienced before naturally as well as spiritually the elevation in your life spiritually has taken another height that people don't understand. So don't even try to explain yourself, okay? It's going to be some moves that you're going to make in your life that you ain't going to even understand. But because God is going to put it on your heart, be like the man laying at the pool of Bethesda and 
just follow instructions and watch what God do. The Lord is going to open up the matrix again for you. The Lord says he's going to do it for you because you never lost hope. And you never blamed him for absolutely nothing. God said he's going to open up the matrix just for you. And your trust and your belief be an expectation. I'm standing on this word today because I believe in God. You're not going to have to shed another tear a sorrow concerning it because this time is going to be tears of joy. I promise you. I, 